Philippine city volunteers tend to find survivors in Mantin Lupa and Makati. We see how Yuli Tsuji Hospital's anti-smoking campaign in Taiwan is benefiting the local community. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in the Philippines, city volunteers recently held relief distributions for fire survivors in the cities of Manting Lupa and Makati. Knowing that the fire left many without roofs over their heads, volunteers thoughtfully offered blankets, sleeping mats, rice and other relief items to help the residents. In Mounting Lupa City, an overturned kerosene lamp started a fire that destroyed 70 houses in Barangue, Alabang. As most of the residents in the area have trouble making ends meet, the fire only made their lives worth, with some left homeless. When the fire broke out, I didn't know what to do or save. All I thought about was that I should either go upstairs or jump out of the building for my own safety. After an initial assessment, city volunteers returned to the barangay with relief items such as sleeping mats, pots, toothbrush, toothpaste, cleaning clothes, and much more. Upon receiving the items, many residents break into smiles. <laughs> Siji's timely assistance brings us hope. I can tell that all the volunteers are helping us selflessly regardless of race or faith. I have to take care of three children all on my own and life is really hard. Every day all I think about is how to make ends meet because I am the sole breadwinner of my family. <laughs> Following the tragedy, single mother Benade Villa de Musa prayed for help. Her prayer was answered when a group of blue and white angels showed up with relief. The word Ci in Ci means compassion. The word Ji means relief. Meanwhile, in Makati City, on February 27, a fire broke out in Barangue Sebo and Guadalupe Vejo. It is really hard when you lose everything, especially for a mother like me with a lot of children. I really need a shelter where I can keep them safe. Due to the fire, many residents are left homeless. Thankfully, Tsuji arrived with help. Part of the relief distribution, everyone prays together for peace and harmony. Before, we used to live a luxurious lifestyle, but the fire took away everything. My husband told me that he feels like it was a dream, and when we woke up, everything was gone. I'm very grateful for all your help. Knowing that these fire survivors are in need of daily necessities, city volunteers arrive with blankets, rice, and much more. I know the road to recovery will be very hard, but I'm very happy that City Foundation provided us with so much help. I'm truly grateful. We lost everything in the fire. Whether you are rich or poor, we should contribute our share and help those in greater need. All of you can become a giver as well. Despite the road to recovery being long, knowing that city volunteers are there to support them along the way, residents have found the strength to move on. Since the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 317, city volunteers have been mobilized to extend their care and support to the distressed families waiting for news of their loved ones. In fact, city's affinity was formed with Malaysia Airlines when a memorandum of understanding was signed between the two back in 2007. As part of the agreement, city will, in the event of a disaster, help by providing care, food and transport to the airline's emergency management center. Let's take a look. News of missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 has made headlines over the past few days. As 10 countries join in the search of the missing aircraft, families of passengers are enduring an agonizing wait for answers. 
Immediately following the incident, volunteers of the International Buddhist NGO Tsuji Foundation were mobilized in Beijing and Kuala Lumpur to provide any assistance possible. Because of the language barriers, MAS staff often have trouble communicating with family members. But most of the city volunteers know how to speak Mandarin and Cantonese, so they will be able to tend to their needs. 81 years old this year, Cho Chui Yu operated a medical transport plane during the Vietnam War and was also a chief pilot of China Airlines. In 1994, Cho witnessed firsthand Tsuji's efficiency in mobilizing its volunteers during the Nagoya plane crash. During the tragic plane crash in Daoyuan in 1998 and again in Penghu in 2002, the blue and white clad Tsuji volunteers were there to help. In 2002, Malaysia Airlines established an emergency management center where employees are deployed as volunteers to provide support and care in the event of a disaster. With one-fourth of the airline's passengers predominantly Chinese, MA staff, who are mostly Muslim, have been unable to handle non-Muslim cases effectively. Hence, at the Aviation Emergency Response Conference held in Bangkok in 2006, manager of the Emergency Management Center, Mr. Maud Fouad Sharuji, expressed an interest in working with a Buddhist NGO. Finally, in 2007, a Memorandum of Understanding was signed with the city Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter on August 16th, marking the start of a joint partnership between Tsuji and MAS. 就是由慈济志工组成的一个电话接线的团队来去应对。In the event of a disaster, volunteers assume roles as translators and co-operators to liaison with Chinese-speaking family members. We will also dispatch a group to the airport or at the scene of the accident. And where food provisions are running low, Tsuji will step in to provide food. 提供一些紧急的一个食物。since the signing of the MOU, several training seminars and drills are conducted each year in this MAS training center behind me. These professional seminars and training courses have helped prepare Tsuji volunteers for efficient second-line humanitarian relief operations in the event of mishaps. 去年刚巧在东马沙巴古达地区发生一个比较小型的 An air accident occurred in Kudat Sabah last year. Tsuji volunteers stepped in to accompany the victims' families. We didn't need much manpower at the time, so we only mobilized a few volunteers. But compared to the intensity of this recent incident, there is still a lot for us to learn. The various training and air disaster drills have helped improve the volunteers' skills, and in the unfortunate event of a disaster, city volunteers will be ready to assume their responsibilities to provide comfort and love to help families in need. Moving to the United States, Senior City Commissioner Xi Sidao passed away on February 21st after a long battle with cancer. The volunteer joined Tsuji in the 90s and over the years have remained steadfast and committed to promoting Tsuji's work even when he was diagnosed with liver cancer in 2010. Xi Sidao said as life is full of impermanence, he wanted to make every minute of his life count. Next, we look back to the life of this devoted Volunteer. Two thousand and ten, a deadly earthquake struck Haiti. U.S. Tsuji volunteer Xi Sidao arrived not long after to conduct a disaster survey. The same year, he was diagnosed with liver cancer. A heart deeply tied to the disaster survivors, Xi still joined several relief missions to Port-au-Prince. What we can do is really limited, but for them, our assistance has opened the window to their hearts and the seed of love has been planted in their hearts. Thank
I learned what it means to be a well-rounded person from Brother Zidao. He treats and cares for every volunteer like his own family. When we encounter setbacks, he always lends a sympathetic ear. Toward the end of 2013, she resigned from his post and began staying at home to fight his illness. Unfortunately, his illness took a turn for the worse in February, and she passed away peacefully in his sleep. I extend my sincerest blessings to Brother Sidal and hope that he will return to us soon. We hope to see a Bodhisattva in our kindergarten soon that is carefree and calm like him. Although his life ended at 56, Shi Sidal has touched the lives of many during his lifetime, and his commitment to Tiji and serving the greater good has made his life one full of meaning and purpose. of nuclear energy being questioned worldwide and Taiwan going forward in bringing the fourth nuclear power plant into operation. In today's report, we travel to New Taipei City to visit the power plant to see how nuclear energy is produced and how nuclear waste is handled. Here's more. At the first reactor inside the fourth nuclear power plant, 872 fuel rods from overseas were transported here three months ago ready to be used. The uranium inside the fuel rods when struck by neutrons will result in nuclear fission, which means the uranium splits into fragments and releases energy. We make use of this energy to heat up the water in the reactors so that it will be vaporized and electricity will be generated through these machines. The process of turning nuclear energy into electricity does not result in any CO2 emission. According to Thai Power, the two reactors at the fourth power plant are able to generate 19.3 billion kilowatts of electricity a year. However, for a fossil fuel plant to produce the same amount, it would also release 16.2 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. The Taichung power plant not only releases CO2, but also suspended particles. That's why Zhanghua County has the second highest lung cancer rate in the nation. Though nuclear energy doesn't cause air pollution, it releases radioactive substances into the environment. In fact, not many of us know that dangerous nuclear waste in Taiwan has never left us, as it has always been kept inside the power plants. The high-level nuclear waste, which were used for nuclear fuel, have basically been stored in our reactor plant for 15 years before moving to the fuel plant for another 25 years. It can be stored away for a total of 40 years. Besides the question of where these nuclear waste are stored, what's more important is nuclear safety. It was only after two or three years following the Fukushima incident that the Japanese admitted they tried to irrigate the reactor to avoid a meltdown, but the water never reached the core reactor. The tremor destroyed the electricity and water supply system inside the Fukushima power plant, thus leading to the meltdown of its reactors. Seeing this, 16 giant water pumps were installed at the fourth power plant. This is a pump inside a fourth plant, and besides each pump is a water gate, which, if we close behind us, prevents any seawater from coming through. The pump can still work during electric outages using a diesel engine. If this system fails, Thai Power has another safety measure in place, which is a water storage tank situated 117 meters above sea level. The water storage tank in the case of an emergency will be able to directly transport water from a higher point to our plant without using any electricity and help cool off the reactors. The staff at Thai Power say the chances of a nuclear disaster happening is very minimal. But is that really the case? Of the world's 480 reactors, six have experienced major nuclear disasters. New reactors are particularly risky when first brought online. 
The three Mal Island reactors and the Chernobyl reactors were all new. One was only used for four months, while the other wasn't even two years old before the disaster occurred. Despite the protest against the fourth nuclear power plant, it may still begin operations come end of this year. We cannot put the next generation at risk for our own benefits. We should not create tragedies for our future generations. We have no right to. As global warming becomes a serious consideration for countries worldwide, whether nuclear energy is beneficial or detrimental to our environment is still debatable. Nonetheless, we should realize any decisions made by us will ultimately influence the future of our next generation. Staying in Taiwan, Yuli City Hospital recently received a National Tobacco Free Hospital Award for its effort in not only keeping the hospital free from cigarette butts and its promotion of a non-smoking environment, but also for its success in its quit smoking program. Behind it all is the work of the hospital superintendent, Zhang Yuling, who set an example for his co-workers by picking up any cigarette butts found on the hospital grounds. 平常人家都是比較會在那個那個路口的那個樹下抽煙,要不然他們就會轉移。They smoke underneath the tree at the crosswalk or else they will move next to the underground ramp to smoke. Familiar with the smoking spots around the hospital, the superintendent of Yuli Ziji Hospital, Zhang Yulin, not only saves lives at work but also picks up cigarette butts to make a difference. I carry gloves with me all the time in my pocket. Besides a handkerchief, gloves are inside my pocket. To safeguard the health of patients, Superintendent Zhang set out to establish a smoke-free hospital. And from the signs set up across the hospital grounds, his determination is clear. The more of these non-smoking stops that are set up, the more it becomes a boundary, a line that is planted in the hearts of people. When people smoke here, I will come over and politely tell them, oh sorry, you can't smoke here. Sometimes, friendly reminders are not enough. Thus, Superintendent Zhang decided to use his spare time to pick up any cigarette butts he finds on the ground. Without cigarette butts, the area is clean for everyone to enjoy. A clean environment serves as a suggestion for others to also keep this area clean. It's known as the broken window theory. Following in the superintendent's footsteps, Dr. Zhou Dali has also begun to pick up the litter butts. The superintendent is too busy. Normally, it's just the superintendent picking up the cigarette butts. But seeing how much he has worked each day, I thought I can help pick up cigarette butts too. Out of breath from running is Chen Ji Tai, who has smoked 30 cigarettes a day for 26 years. Chen tried to quit smoking three times on his own before enrolling in the smoking cessation program run by the Yuli Zhi Hospital. Before when I quit on my own, I would feel insecure and anxious and it would make me want to take up smoking again. But this time, with the help of the center and anti-smoking medication I'm taking, I don't feel that way anymore. During the eight-week program, Chen was able to successfully give up the habit. Now in the face of temptations, Chen uses humor to reject offers to smoke. If my co-workers don't know that I quit smoking, I will say very loud when they offer me a smoke that I'm no longer married to the habit. In the end, it's the same story. If one is determined, then success is yours. Recognized by the government for its efforts, the Yuli Ziji Hospital was honored with a tobacco-free award. This vote of confidence will aid the hospital in its continuing efforts to safeguard the health of local residents. In Taiwan's Kaohsiung, we meet Ms. Chen, who is not only the sole breadwinner at home, but also shoulders the responsibility of looking after her young husband and bedridden son. Here is her story. As customers come and go, little does anyone know that in this tiny breakfast shop exist two different worlds. Let's do it one more time. Great, good job. 
See, you're so brave. This is how we interact with each other because I like to treat him as a normal person. Lying on the bed is Miss Tin's 23-year-old son, who became paralyzed in kindergarten when he had an asthma attack. More than a year ago, her husband was also diagnosed with lung cancer, yet it is her faith that gives her the strength to go on. I read the Bible and felt that my child is really courageous. His actions encourage me. In life, we all each have a role to play, and it is really about how to play your role to the best you can. With me, I feel that my life has been really colorful. Despite all the setbacks in life, Miss Tin does not forget to encourage others to do good deeds. It is the love she has for her family that keeps the mother standing strong and tall. All the painful things will eventually go away because we will go to paradise. Staying in Taiwan, we meet Hualien City Elementary School student Luo Weizhe, who has followed in his father's footsteps to watch Master Zheng Yan's wisdom at dawn broadcast at the Hualien Jing Si Ho every day. Making an effort to wake up early and join this practice, the youngster said he hopes to absorb more of the Master's drama and wisdom in the days ahead. Here at the Hualien Jin Si Ho, Luo Weizhe joins his father in watching Master Zheng Yan's wisdom at dawn broadcast. The next day I said to my father, OK, I will go with you. Then I found it to be quite interesting, so I continued. Luo Weizhe is a third grader at the Hualien City Elementary School. Over the past few weeks, he has woken up early to join his father in watching Master Zheng Yan's wisdom at dawn broadcast every morning at 5. Master Zheng Yan's wisdom and dharma is universal and for all ages. As long as he is willing to learn, I would like to bring him along so he can also bathe in the Master's dharma. As Master Zheng Yan's wisdom at dawn broadcast starts, Luo Weizhe listens attentively and takes notes on what is being said. I'm here to learn about Master Zheng Yan's Dharma and Wisdom. <laughs> yes, I can, because I can understand Taiwanese. Despite his young age, Luo Weizhe has taken Master Zheng Yan's Dharma to heart and is able to summarize the Master's teachings. <laughs> If you walk on the Bodhisattva's path alone, you walk slower and are unable to motivate people to join you. However, if you work together, you can move quicker and motivate more people to take part. With the collective efforts, everyone comes together to make a difference. Writing down Master Zheng Yan's words of wisdom in his school book, Luo Weizhe vows to follow in the master's footsteps and continues his cultivation within Ji. We go back to the United States at the end of today's show. In Fresno of Central California, City held a free clinic at the Sunnyside High School where volunteers and team of medical staff offered a variety of medical services to local residents. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.